All right, guys, this is the last one we're doing in our series here on our air-cooled V-twin engine that we've done here at Western Tech in our motorcycle division. What we're going to do is uh, talk about how to properly install our intake manifold. This is a big source of headache for Harley-Davidson engines because it's such a place to create an intake leak. Uh, due to the design of the V-twin engine to be able to squeeze this manifold here, we need some flexibility to get that down in that V. This bike here is an actual fuel-injected one, so here's the throttle body for this particular motor, but what we see is the same style manifold with these flanges. There's nothing any different about that. For purposes of the video, I'm going to do some demonstration from this one because you guys will be able to see a little bit more. What I've done here is I've left it alone and to make a point of what you're going to get in your kit here. We always are putting new gaskets on and we have uh, a manifold one too. We don't need it because of our fuel injected vehicle, but you're going to have new all, all the time here for this. Don't ever reuse these. These gaskets are super cheap and uh, what you're going to see here is a good example of what one looks like. You get a close up of this. You want to shine a light on this? Yeah. Can you see how there's a big ridge on there? And then you see a new one here. And to show you guys, so you see what's going on? Is there's just a big lip on there. That's and that's just due to time and heat and age or whatnot. So that's normal. So that's our bad one. So what we want to do here, do we still have a piece of emery cloth handy around here? That's one thing I forgot I like to grab. While, while he's grabbing a piece of emery cloth, what you're going to see that we would do is we'd want to make sure and dress this up, get this good and clean. What we're getting is the old rubber off of here. That's a big problem. Now, the other problem that we typically have is these flanges are also labeled front and rear. So I've seen people try to mix those up and that can be a problem. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. And the other thing we're going to do is we want to get in here and we're going to get this good and cleaned up. And I want to see, you can get a close up here. We can see how much buildup's on there in the old rubber material. I don't want, I'm not trying to remove metal, but I'm going to get it back down to a nice surface here where I'm not, I don't have old rubber on there so that as I put the new seal on, the old rubber actually creates a high spot and then I have a leak, right? So these are all things that we need to do to clean up this manifold. The other thing that I've seen to be a big problem is around here. Do you notice how on this manifold that that's not even machined? That's actually still the rough casting. Okay? We're, uh, we're casted on the inside as well. We have a stopping point where it's casted, but it's not finely machined. Like one thing I noticed about this, do you see that burr right there? Can you guys see that? There's a lip on there. Man, knock that off. Okay? That's just a casting burr on there. What do you think that's doing to the O-ring? It's, it's pushing it up and creating a high spot so I don't have as much real estate or seal on that. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is we're going to perfect this rough casting. We're going to go around here, we're going to dress this up and get a nice good surface. And once again, I'm not trying to remove metal, I'm just getting rid of high spots. Okay? You can make your manifold have a lot better fit and less chance of leaking if you take this time to clean this up and do that. So you guys understand the process, I'm not going to do all of it right now. Let's talk about other problems that we have with Harley-Davidson uh, intake manifolds. We only have two bolts and we're clamping down between a pretty large you know, surface area in between here. These work great if you do it right. If you do it wrong and you take one and you pinch it all the way down and then you try and pull this one over, this flange, it's going to bend and these do bend. Uh, a lot of times, on a, especially a high performance motor, I just put new ones on. You can buy S&S, &S, there's other brands out there where they're not that expensive. I think 30 bucks or something, you can get a new set of flanges. You can give them chrome if you want, uh, whatever. But what we want to do is this, this bench does not count as a true surface plate. It gives us a good idea because they're pretty new. But we would go to a piece of glass or a surface plate and we would take it, put it on there, and we would try and see if we get any wobble out of that. You see how this one's actually pretty flat? We're not getting a bad tip or anything out of it. If I could sit here and get this tapping as I uh, go back and forth with it, then I'd be concerned that it's bent. If this is bent, we can't take this round surface, bend it, and get this round gasket to create a positive seal. It's going to leak. A leak here is a direct intake leak. You're gonna, if you ever get into a, a job where you're like jetting a carb, uh, carburetor bike, let's say, and you're throwing tons of fuel at it, to, go, to get it to quit backfiring or popping or banging, intake manifold, okay? Think about this, if, if it calls for a stock, say, uh, 45 pilot jet, 
and you're having to put a 60 in it because you have so much air leaking in here, you're having to give it a ton of fuel just to get it back to that ratio. You know what, you'll make the bike actually run pretty decent, but you know what's going to happen is what's going to have my customer's gas mileage? Yeah, and it's just not right. I mean, we need to be able to fix this. We aren't adding fuel, and that air going through there is unfiltered too, correct? So something to think about. Well, let's just kind of get into the assembly of this particular one here. I would take my flange here that's marked, <coughs> excuse me, marked front. I'm going to take my brand new O-ring. I've got some uh, grease here. And I'm going to just kind of lightly grease up this flange area. I'm going to lightly grease up the seal. This is the whole secret right here. And you'll see here in a second. When I get this good and lubed up and don't have it dry, as I take and put my gasket on first, Okay, get that nice and seated. And then I take my flange here. I did that wrong. It'd be helpful if I put it on the right way. Put the flange on first. See the cone shape of that, by the way? If I could possibly do it wrong one more time in one day, would it be great? Let's make sure that I'm even on the right cylinder here. I'm still on the front and I'm in place. And it'll it basically self-retain itself. Now, do you see how the flat side is now going to go against the cylinder head? And that cone is, as we tighten this down, it's going to take that shape up of this, the matching shape of this flange. Make sense? Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the other side here real quick as well. And I'm not going to go through the whole process of torquing this down and cleaning everything on this particular motor, but you guys will when you do yours. So we're good and, uh, uh, good and flat on here. One thing about Harley-Davidson, a lot of these, is you're going to have two bolts that are left in the cylinder head, and we're going to go ahead and be able to just let you see those. And we're going to, I don't know if on the camera, if you could actually see that F or that rear mark before when we were talking about front or rear. Okay, well we definitely can now. So we're going to go ahead and we're basically just going to hinge this in place. And here's where the tips start to come in again. The Harley manual doesn't tell you much of anything except to get this in place. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get my bolts up here. Just roughly set up in place. Do you guys notice how as I'm putting this together, I'm just wiggling it continually? Yeah. You guys see us doing that a lot is we're basically letting stuff settle, aren't we? We're going to find that sweet spot. When we did our rocker covers, we did the same thing. We kind of just wiggled them in place as we were tightening the bolts down. Now, per the service manual, there's a torque spec of, where was it, six to eight uh, foot-pounds for these fasteners. It is impossible to get any kind of normal torque wrench in here to be able to get some type of specification, especially if you're on the bike or whatnot. So a couple uh, cool tools that they make, you guys saw this on disassembly, was this S wrench that has a ball end on one side that's really nice to basically just maybe get it cracked loose or to get it into a position. You have to be careful. Anytime you're dealing with that ball end, is it easy to strip? If you strip that bolt, how do you get that out of there? little grinder. It's got, it's got to be a super mesh. You can't take anything off. There's nothing to remove to get down here. So you have to get in there with the grinder. You'd be there all day long trying to do that. So rule of thumb is I think it'd be a good idea just to put new Allen bolts in there. You know, make it new and then uh, be really careful how you do that. But I'd flip it around here and I'd go ahead and get this in place. Now here's the big tip that I want to get, uh, get you guys thinking about on this. When, these, when you get these snugged up, and they're just down there and just barely touching, you can actually move this. Do you see how far I can move this manifold back and forth? And a lot of times a guy will come in with an intake leak, and he's like, yeah, I just had the shop do this, and I've, I've got a problem here. And I'll go ahead and I'll test the manifold for leaks. I'll see it's just pouring out one side. But what I'll notice, I might be able to show this from the back side better, is I'll see that one of the manifolds is pulled all the way over. It's like they tightened one down all of the way and then went and tightened the other one. So there's just not as a good a possibility of actually the sealing surface on there. That, that's problem number one, right? So what we know is we want to kind of keep this gap or this distance equal in this manifold so that we don't have that problem. When these are torqued down, there's a little bit more showing between here and here. So you can't really see so much right now because we haven't gone through the whole process. But are you guys clear on that? The manifold's going to be equal. So here's, here's problem, problem number two. A lot of guys will take and torque this in place, lock it down, and then uh, step to the side a little bit here so these guys can see this. Their problem is look at this. Do you see how much rotation I get up and down? So before you torque this in place, what you need to do is actually install your carburetor, install your air filter housing, 
and then once everything's in a sweet spot and these bolts are just barely loose, no different than your rocker cover, have everything just kind of in that sweet spot. You got your manifold, since this isn't torqued down, if I have my carburetor on here and I bolt my air filter on here, am I going to have to bend my air filter bracket over to match these holes? No, everything's nice and what I, I call settled, right? So once everything's settled, I can slowly start to snug all the fasteners down together. Does that make sense? What's going to happen then is there's going to be no stress on this, no stress on the gaskets, and no stress on your air filter bracket. How many people in here have ever seen at Harley's where they come in, this air filter bracket's cracked? It's, it's either not shimmed properly here, like it's missing a washer, and, the, and they had to bend it over to make contact to that, or this manifold was so offset up, down, sideways, that it just basically held and stressed that carburetor air filter bracket. Does that make sense? Pretty cool? Anything you guys want to add to this? Nothing? Okay, that's what we do. We go ahead and finish that process, and guys, that is how you properly install a Harley-Davidson manifold, whether it's fuel-injected or whether it's carbureted. It's the same thing. Some grease, uh, knowing what you're working with, and uh, it's not that difficult to get that thing in there. Did I fight that or have to force it in there or get a hammer out or anything? Not at all. All right, that's it.